I heard that we can use GPUs in Cloud Run, which is serverless. Yes, this is useful for running your own models if you don't want to call the Gemini API on Vertex AI. Let me show you how to do it. Welcome back, Vita. Why would I want to use GPUs with Cloud Run? Good question. Well, a GPU is great for serving open large language models, such as Gemma or Llama. And Cloud Run is serverless, so it scales up and down automatically, and you only pay for what you use. Right, uh, because the alternative would be to call Google's Vertex API from my Cloud Run service, right? Yes, that's right. And that's way easier. You just make an API call using the client libraries, and you don't have to worry about anything else, because Google engineers make sure that everything is running well. But if you want more control and customizability, you can run an open model yourself on a GPU in Cloud Run. All right. Uh, so let's say I want that extra control and customizability you mentioned. How does it work? Well, let me show you an example. There are detailed step-by-step -step instructions for how to build this application in a code lab. I'll give you an overview. I'm going to run Google's Gemma 2, which is an open model, using Olema, an LLM inference server. And then there's another Cloud Run service in front of it, uh, in the center of the diagram. What's that service? Well, that's the front end service. So the Cloud Run service on the left receives incoming HTTP requests from users, and it runs Node.js, Express, and Olema.js. And why did you break that out to be a separate Cloud Run service? Well, this backend service needs a GPU, and my frontend service uses just a bit of CPU. By using two Cloud Run services, they can scale independently, and I can assign them different amounts of memory and other resources. That's more uh, cost efficient. Mm, I got it. I've already set up my Google Cloud project and enabled the right services and APIs. The code lab has all the details for how to do that. I'll create the Olama backend service. This is the one on the right in the architecture diagram. I will start with creating a container image that has Olama and Gemma. This is the Docker file. And then we need to build the container using Cloud Build. And the command tells Google to use a more powerful build machine? Yes, because I want this build to be fast. I selected a powerful machine type with more CPU and, that's important, network bandwidth. This is a heavy build because it downloads the full Gemma 2 model. And even with this upgraded machine, it will take around seven minutes to build the container. Let me start right now. Oh, and we're back. Uh, was the build successful? Yes, I think so. Yes, it was. Now it's time to build the container image to Cloud Run. This is the command for that. Ah, I see a new parameter called GPU. I haven't seen that before. That's right. I am setting the number of GPUs to one and the type of GPU to NVIDIA L4. Also, the no CPU throttling option is required for enabling GPU. I'll run the deploy command now. And we're back. Looks like the deployment was successful. Yes, it was. Now, if I open the URL now, I get back a 401 unauthorized. That's expected because this Olama API is intended for my front end to call. When I deployed it, I set it to require IAM authentication. How can we test it? Test, I like that. Trust, but verify, right? Uh, let's make sure that the Gemma 2 model can return replies. I've set up the Cloud Run developer proxy on my machine so that I can access a local host URL to send a request to the Cloud Run service. The proxy takes care of authentication for me. Ah, very nice. What are you going to ask the model, Rita? Well, the hello world of LLMs is asking the model why the sky is blue. There, I'm sending the question now. Hmm, uh, that reply looks cryptic. Yes, you're right. This API is for machines, not for humans. That's where the other Cloud Run service comes in. It will use the Olema.js library to decode this kind of reply into something that's more human readable. Makes sense. Great. First, I'll create another directory for the front-end service. Then I will paste in the package.json file from the code lab. It describes which libraries are needed by the front-end, like Express and Olama. And then I will paste in the main code file from the code lab. It looks like uh, you have a main function there, which creates a Google Auth object. Yes. 
The backend service is only open to authorized users. So we need to define a new fetch function here that calls the backend service and includes an ID token. It also creates a new Alama object that is a client for the backend service. Here is the handler that runs when the user opens the root URL of the service. It sends a request to the backend service, accepts the response as a stream, and writes that stream to the response that is sent to the client. Mm -hmm. And now it's time to build and deploy the front-end service? That's right. I'll need a Docker file, just like before. I've copied it from the code lab already, and I ran Docker build before our video shoot. Can we try it out? Sure. Let me run this curl command. It will hit the front-end service and ask why the sky is blue. And there's the response. The sky is blue because of rally scattering. And look how the response streams to the client. Ah, I didn't know the scattering was called that. Uh, neat. Uh, but Vita, I have some questions. Go ahead, Martin. Cloud Run scales up and down with traffic. Uh, does it work the same with when Cloud Run uses GPUs? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's one of the advantages of using GPUs with Cloud Run. If your service is not handling requests, your service scales down to zero instances. I like that. When there are no requests, there are no instances. Yes, that's right. If you deploy a Cloud Run service, you pay for the resources you use and any GPUs if you've added them. The Cloud Run pricing page has more details. And in this example application, we use Gemma 2. Now, model files can be quite large. Where did you store that model file? Well, this Gemma 2 model with 9 billion parameters takes up 5.4 gigabytes of storage. And that's small enough that we included it in the container image itself. That gives us a reliable and fast startup. If you're using larger models, it may be better to download them when the container starts. For example, from cloud storage. There's a page in the documentation that compares the different approaches. Very good. I will include that uh, link in the video description below. Now, how can I get my hands dirty with this new technology? Well, as we're recording this video, GPUs in Cloud Run are in public preview. You can request access by submitting a quota increasing request in the web console. And if you're watching this several months after we recorded the video, there's a chance that the feature may be generally available. Update the gcloud command line tool on your computer and try deploying a service with the GPU parameter. If there isn't an error message, GPUs are open for everyone to use. Well, thanks for showing us how to use Cloud Run with GPUs, Vita. You're welcome. Many developers have requested GPUs on Cloud Run, and it feels great that we're finally able to give it to them. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any questions for Vita or me about GPUs in Cloud Run, please let us know in the comments. Also, do let us know if there are any other serverless topics you'd like to see in future episodes. We read every single comment. Until next time. Mm -hmm.